Good morning children. Now that we know how to draw different charts and graphs, so let us see which graph to use in different cases. We often see different types of graphs or charts in newspapers, magazines, books and even on TV. There are so many different types of graphs which means all kind of data are not same and cannot be efficiently represented by a single type of graph. Correct? Then how to know which kind of graph is ideal for a certain type of data? Let us see. So firstly when should we use a bar graph? Here we have data of average rainfall for 6 months. We want to make a comparison using a graph. Here we have two kind of data name of months and average rainfall for each month. The average rainfall in January was around 100 mm. In Feb it was around 120 mm. March it was 130. In April around 125 mm. For May it was 110 and for June it was 130 mm. Here it makes better sense to use a bar chart or a bar graph. Why? Because a bar graph is used to show comparison among the categories. This bar graph compares average monthly rainfall of a region for the last six months. We often hear of comparison between the population of male to that of female. In Delhi, there were 830 females per thousand male in 1991. In 2001, the number of females reduced to 822. In Mumbai, there were 828 females per thousand males in 2001, which got reduced to 823. The male-female ratio fell in Kolkata too, though Chennai showed little bit improvement. So here, there are four cities in comparison and for every city there would be another comparison between data of 1991 and 2001. For this kind of situation we use double bar chart. It's a special type of bar graph. Why? Because we are doing two comparisons at the same time. First we are comparing different cities. Secondly, we are comparing two data that is for two different years for each city. Let's see another example. Class 8 did very well in midterm test and here we see the result. Only four students failed. They got marks between 25 to 40. 13 students got marks between 55 to 70. 7 children excelled and got marks between 85 and 100. What do we see here? Here we are given different ranges of marks and these ranges are continuous. Which type of graph is ideal when set of data are actually in ranges? For these kind of data, it's better to use histogram. A histogram is a bar graph that shows data in intervals. Here we are showing how many students are there in each interval of marks. And as you already know, we use a zigzag line along the horizontal axis and then start 25. Why? Because we are not showing the range between 0 to 25. You must have also seen pi graph comparing the components of air. So in air, there is around 78% of nitrogen, 20.9% is oxygen, 0.03% is carbon dioxide and the rest is other gases. We are comparing different components of air means we are comparing different parts of the whole so a pie chart is ideal for this kind of comparison. That is, 
when a whole is divided into different parts. Let us see one more example of pie chart. Say, in a metropolitan city, 16% of population is children. 23% of the population are people belonging to the age group 14 to 24. 27% of population belong to the age group 25 to 39 and 21% belong to the age group 40 to 55. 13% are older than 55 years of age. If we draw a pie chart in this case, then you will see a pie chart clearly gives the idea of age distribution in that metropolitan city. Here, we are comparing different parts, that is, different age groups in the population. Let's take another example. A company earned 15 million as profit in 2010. For the next five years, its profits were 13.5 million, 17 million, 11 million, 10.5 million, and 9 million, respectively. What graph should be used in this case? We can use bar graph, but in this case, line graph is more suitable to display data which changes continuously over a period of time. Look, we can easily understand how data is changing over the period. First, profit rose and then it started to fall after 2012. So, there are different types of graphs because each type of graph is suitable for a certain type of scenario or a certain type of data. So, now you know a lot about different types of graphs and the scenarios in which each type of graph can be used suitably. That's all for now. Bye-bye children.